Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with an update on the current situation here in Spain, day 297 of the current situation, getting close to day 300, and unfortunately this pandemic is showing no signs of letting up. Firstly, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video, lots of comments, lots of debate happening there as usual. Thanks to people that supported the channel by buying merchandise, and a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon for your support. Now, as I said, we're getting close to day 300. 300 days of a continuous roller coaster ride. No government in Europe seems to be able to get this health crisis under control. And we saw yesterday that England has gone back into a full lockdown. A lot of people wondering if Spain is going to follow suit. The answer to that is no. The whole country is not going to go into a full lockdown, apparently. Or well, that is at least what the government is saying. We can see here that Salvador Illa rules out applying severe confinement in Spain. The Minister of Health has ruled out applying home confinement because this measure is not contemplated in the response plan. And at the Interterritorial Health Council here in Spain that was celebrated yesterday, Mr. Ia also said that no one has proposed a severe confinement, but they have proposed more severe measures. No one has proposed a severe confinement. It's not on anyone's mind. In these terms, the Minister of Health, Salvador Ia, has expressed himself in his appearance this afternoon before the media after the meeting of the Interterritorial Health Council. Confinement is not on the table, but they have talked about more stringent measures in virtually all regions that are experiencing an upward trend in the cumulative incidence of infections of COVID from December the 10th to the 12th. No one has proposed the severe confinement. It's not on anyone's mind, the minister added. But the current containment measures for COVID are going to be toughened. So there you go. According to the health minister, total confinement is not being contemplated, but stricter measures are going to be implemented in virtually all the autonomous communities here in Spain. One of the first regions here in Spain to announce stricter measures is Catalonia. And we can see here that the Catalan government decreed municipal confinement and new restrictions due to the negative data of COVID in Catalonia. Starting January the 7th, gyms and shopping centres will close their doors for 10 days and on the weekend only stores selling essential products will open. So Catalonia, they're announcing what they're going to do in order to get the health situation under control and I'm sure that other autonomous communities around the country will announce similar plans in coming days. So basically what's going to happen is that we're going to have 17 different plans that the central government is going to stick to its plans and let the autonomous governments handle the situation. Now here in Spain, we're coming to the end of the festive season, the long festive season in this country, which lasts normally up until the 6th of January, perhaps a couple of days more depending on the calendar. But this long long holiday period here in Spain is also concealing the magnitude of the third coronavirus wave in Spain. Testing fell 13% during the Christmas period and data reporting has been distorted by shorter working weeks, leaving health authorities uncertain about the real situation even as infections soar. So the holiday period concealing the magnitude of the coronavirus here in Spain, basically nobody knows what's going on. Now let's have a look at health data around the country by looking at a map of Spain and various autonomous communities. We'll start here with a map of the country. And we can see that the risk level around the country is high. The total amount of cases nearly hitting the 2 million mark. The accumulated incidence rate in the last 14 days now sitting at 272. We can see the total amount of deaths there. In the last seven days, there have been 397 COVID-related deaths. There are currently 13,458 people hospitalized with COVID around Spain. And there are 2,192 people in ICUs, which is exactly 23% of all ICUs in the country. We'll take a look now at Extremadura, which now has the highest accumulated incidence rate in the country over the last 14 days at 604. But surprisingly, the risk level there is still medium. There have been 24 COVID-related deaths in the last seven days. There are 321 patients currently hospitalized in Extremadura with COVID. And there are 30 patients currently in ICUs, which is 14% of all ICUs in that particular autonomous community. The Balearic Islands now, we can see that the risk level there is extreme, the total amount of cases. The AI rate in the last 14 days, now 529. There have been seven COVID-related deaths in the last seven days. There are 427 people currently hospitalized with COVID in the Balearic Islands, and there are 101 patients occupying ICUs which is 34% of all ICUs in the Balearic Islands. And finally, now the Canary Islands, we can see that the risk level there is low. The total amount of cases, the accumulated incidence rate in the last 14 days, 126. There have been 21 COVID-related deaths in the last seven days. There are 291 COVID patients currently hospitalized in the Canary Islands, 
and there are 52 COVID patients in ICUs, which is just under 12% of all ICUs in the Canary Islands. So a tale of two islands there, the Balearics and the Canaries, and they're like chalk and cheese when it comes to the current health situation. Now, as I mentioned yesterday, the vaccination plan here in Spain has got off to a bit of a rocky start. It seems to be running at different speeds according to where you are in Spain. And as we can see here, more than 80,000 Spaniards have been vaccinated in the first uneven week, from 6% in Madrid to 80% in Asturias. Some regional governments have linked slow inoculation with holidays or logistical problems. The autonomous communities in Spain are trying to give a boost to their vaccination plans against COVID-19 after a week at half gas in which 82,000 and 834 doses of the 360,000 distributed in the first large batch have been administered. Some regional governments have linked the slow inoculation with holidays or logistical problems, while the numbers of the pandemic continue to grow in a worrying way. So things going a little bit slow when it comes to vaccinations here in Spain, and at the current speed, we probably won't get everyone done until the year 2028. Now, the latest data on the employment market has been published here in Spain, and as expected, it's not good news. We can see here that the pandemic has destroyed 360,000 jobs in 2020, and in six years in a row of job recovery. Recovery. Registered unemployment rose by 725,000 people and the Social Security closed the year with just over 19 million affiliates. So 360,000 jobs destroyed. I think I also read that there's something like 700,000 people currently in furlough schemes, but never fear because as we know, Pedro Sanchez has a plan to create jobs and get the economy back on track. He just hasn't started it yet. Now let's have a look at some of the comments from previous videos. One here from Vincent Lee. Gee, looking back to last spring, I had travel already set for Portugal, Spain, and then off to Ireland before heading back to the States. Who back then would have imagined the world would be where we are today with this virus as we tried to pull everyone out of this shutdown? I sure didn't. Really like your updates. It gives me a point of comparison between countries and how they are dealing with this whole pandemic. Seems it has mixed results for various reasons. When this is all behind us, the pent up demand will be huge. Take care and be safe. From Vince in California, USA. Yeah, Vincent, thanks for the comment. It is interesting to see how different countries around the world are handling this situation. We've seen that no government has been able to get on top of this in Europe. We go up, we go down, we go around and around. And you're right, I'm sure not many people thought that we would still be in the same situation after such a long time. But we are where we are, and unfortunately, all we can do is just wait it out. And uh, I also agree that demand is going to be huge when we finally come out of this. But uh, as we all know, nobody knows when that is exactly going to be. One here from Matt Cat. I feel sorry for you and all Spaniards when you deliver some of your news. The mess Spain seems to be in makes what we consider messy here in Oz seem more like a bit of a hiccup. As much as I and many others I'm sure love Spain, I think Australia continues to be truly the lucky country. Yeah, Matt Cat, thanks for the comment, and I couldn't agree with you more. At the moment, Australia does appear to be the lucky country. And as you said, what Australia has gone through is nothing compared with what's going on here in Spain or what we've been through. Even as you said, what's going on there at the moment is a mere hiccup compared with this. But as I have said on many an occasion, they did what they needed to do. They shut the country down, didn't let people in. Various premiers there, for example, the one in Western Australia, Mr McGowan, boast of zero community transmission for months and months. And the plan, I imagine, is to keep it that way until everybody can be vaccinated and the virus is no longer a threat. But you're right, Australia and New Zealand do appear to be very, very lucky countries. One here from Stuart. Stew, give paella another go. It's one of my favourite meals. Simple but tasty too. The best paella I ever had was in a local village social in a village called Belle Claire near La Scala. It was a black paella and cost bugger all. It was absolutely delicious. Yes, Stuart, thanks for the comment. And I just want to stop this rumour in its tracks that I don't like paella. It's just not one of my favourite dishes, that's all. I do eat it from time to time. In fact, we had a nice rice dish the other day, which was very tasty, but they didn't call it paella, they called it arroz con marisco. And it was a very tasty dish because, as you know, the secret to a good rice dish is that the rice needs to absorb all of those flavours from the seafood and the stock, and that's what my friend managed to do the other day when he made this fantastic rice dish. So it's not that I hate paella type dishes here in Spain, it's just that I wouldn't order them again down there on the Mediterranean coast, unless somebody recommended the restaurant to me and I was guaranteed not to have one of those typical tourist 
paes, which seem to be so common in that part of the world. And the rice that you mentioned here, the black rice, I imagine it's the one that's done with squid ink, and that is a very, very tasty dish, and I recommend everybody to try it if they have the opportunity here in Spain. One here from Amanda. Hello, Stuart, regarding paella, is it true that it literally means for her? Yeah, Amanda, thanks for the comment. I don't think that that is the meaning of the word paella. I think paella is some type of dish, and I think that somebody did point that out in a reply to your comment. However, it is true that you will hear people in Spain saying paella, meaning for her, but that's just an abbreviation of para. Normally it would be para ella, but they cut it short and say paella, and also pael. Es paella, es pael. Paco, pa quien es esto? Es paella. But no, I don't think it's got anything to do with the rice dish paella. One here from Gwyneth. Ah, the subtitles are not available. I watch these in a very noisy kitchen, so I rely on being able to read the text. Yeah, Gwyneth, thanks for the comment. I can understand that that can be frustrating if the subtitles are not working and you rely on them. I've had a few comments from other people over the journey saying that the comments are not working on certain videos. It's got nothing to do with me. It depends on YouTube. Sometimes the subtitles are ready immediately. Sometimes they take a day. Sometimes they never come up at all. But I think that on the majority of the videos, they are activated automatically. But sometimes the automatic translation can be pretty bad, especially when it comes to translating some of the names of people here in Spain or some of the pueblos and places around the country. One here from Austin Seller. Hi, Stuart. I assume it was the lousy pay you had that caused you to dislike the dish since you've mentioned it a few times, but surely you've had a good one too. Austin, thanks for the comment. As I just mentioned, I don't hate paella. I'm just not a huge fan of rice. And that bad experience that I did have down there in Benidorm did put me off eating paella for quite a while, or at least ordering it in restaurants. I go out to lunch sometimes here with people and they go crazy when they see paella or rice dishes on the menu. That's not my case. I always prefer to order a nice fish dish or a meat dish or something a little bit different that I can try for the first time rather than eat the same things over and over again. So for example, if I go to a restaurant and I see that there's a nice merluza dish, I'll probably order that. If I see that they have rabo de toro, I might order that as well. But paella in a restaurant when there's other things on the menu, probably not. And finally, one here from David, have you been coloring your hair? Yeah, David, thanks for the comment. The answer is no, I have not been coloring me hair. A few people have accused me over the years of applying bleach in 2000, but that's not the case. But I think what you're referring to is that I use a LUT when I edit these videos, an L-U-T, and that changes the color slightly, and you're not getting the exact image that comes out of the camera, and maybe that's why my hair looks as though it's changing color. On that note, I'll start to wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the situation out as you would normally do. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.